Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I made several trips to Walmart this past week and because I was trying to get some more supplies for the fall and holiday season. So when I went there, I the store is kind of in disarray right now and the sewing supplies is sort of scattered all over the place and it's not organized very well because they're reorganizing the entire store. So it's a little frustrating but I think for the most part everybody's being pretty patient. So the rickrack was pretty well picked over. I'm hoping they're going to get more supplies in soon but I bought some red rickrack and some gold. They were out of green so I was a little worried about that. Luckily I have a little bit still that I can use. I also got many different colors of bias tape and if you're not sure what the bias tape is for, it's used to bind the edges of a variety of projects, of your raw edges. So I use a lot of this. Now I also bought a lot of colors. Not just this, a whole bunch of colors because I was getting pretty low. So I want to show you quickly how I organize it. I have it in this plastic shoe box and I have it organized by color. It's the easiest way for me to organize it. I have quarter inch, half inch, and one inch. So I got plenty of red. Hopefully it's going to get me through Christmas. I need a little bit more green, but I couldn't find any orange or brown for the fall holiday. So I'm a little worried. Probably going to have to make my own bias tape. So you can make bias tape and if you want to know how to make your bias tape I do have a link that will be listed below your YouTube screen on how to make bias tape and also how to cut your fabric on the bias. So let's take a look at some of the other items I bought. I love polka dot fabric. Small polka dot, medium, large. I just love polka dots. But I use this particular type a lot. I use it as a trim. I use it to make piping, all kinds of things. And so I was getting really low on both of these. And luckily, Walmart had some in there. Now, their Walmart prices are about half the cost of Joann's. But I do notice the costs everywhere, anywhere I go, has really gone up a lot recently. So that's why I recommend if you're going to buy fabric to make Christmas presents or decorations for the holiday season, I would go in there now and try to get some. Now you're going to see some of the fabrics in Joann's now for Halloween. There's a little bit in there. I noticed last week they were stocking the shelves of Halloween fabric. They were also getting ready to do their Christmas and fall. They were kind of shuffling fabrics around the store to make room for all of this. So I use this a lot. I never ever let it sit on the shelf very long before I run out of it. But I usually only buy a yard to a yard and a half of each. So let's look at some more stuff. I love to cross stitch and I'm currently working on a project that's to make a Thanksgiving pillow. It has a beautiful turkey on it. So it called for specific colors. I went to Walmart because they do carry embroidery thread there and I couldn't find all the colors I needed. So I had to substitute. In other words, I picked another color that was kind of in that range. Some of the embroidery floss, some of the colors were really inexpensive and then others were very expensive. I don't quite understand why there was such a variation in the price on it. I don't know if they were on closeout or what, but if you do a lot of embroidery and you want to make projects for the holiday season, I would kind of stock up a little bit on those specific colors that you think you will be using. Okay, I got more goodies. Walmart has very reasonable prices for the most part on their ribbons and trims. And this one is a really nice 
uh, lace, ribbon lace trim. And I sometimes use it on clothing, but I also use it a lot on pillows. I sometimes like that old fashioned look on my pillows and I will use this lace trim. Then here's some cream colored uh, pom-pom fringe. And this was the last one they had. I wanted to, so I'm hoping that this will help me with what I'm trying to be, trying to work on. Another thing that this was new in there is this uh, Christmas plaid. Isn't this pretty? I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it on yet, but I know I'm gonna use it on something because I really, really like it. I also like checkerboard. And this was in red and they even had it in orange. I'll probably use both of these on the holiday projects too. And then of course they had it in green and I hadn't seen it there before in green or orange. So I was really excited to find it. You know me, I love my polka dots. So I'm sure I will use this on some Christmas project. It's about two inch wide ribbon. Okay, there's more goodies. Let's take a look at it. Isn't this cute? This is panel fabric. Now we're going to give you a link. I, I can't remember offhand where I bought it at, but we'll give you a link where you can get this. And this is called Awesome. And it was created by Sandy Jervis, Jervas. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, for Moda Fabrics. So we'll give you a link, but I'm going to make a fall lap quilt out of this. I'm just gonna show you how to put a border on it. Really, really easy project. So if you wanna get into quilting, look for panel fabrics with a fall theme. They're everywhere, fabric.com, eQuilter.com. Once in a great while, Joanne's will have it. But most of the time, you're gonna find stuff like this in quilt fabric shops. So let's take a look at some more fabric I bought. I made a really quick trip to St. George because I needed a little bit of work done on my serger. I did something really stupid with it, but that's another story. But while I was in there, in the sewing center of Southern Utah in St. George, I can't resist looking at their fabric. And of course, I couldn't get out of the store, but I saw this beautiful, fall border fabric. You can use this borders on quilts and placemats. I'm definitely going to be using this in one of my fall projects because I just couldn't resist it. And right down here at the bottom on the fabric, right down in here, I can't read it upside down, but this is who it is made by. And we'll try to put a link in uh, at the bottom so that you can go to, to a, a website where you can get this. But if you live in the St. George area, just go to the Sewing Center of Southern Utah. It's on Bluff Avenue. Let's take a look at another piece of fabric. I absolutely love large prints and I'm a real sucker for them. I can't resist them. But these had such beautiful fall colors in them. The orange, burnt orange, a dull green. This is so pretty. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make out of it. Probably a table runner of some type. But if you look right down here, again, I can't read it upside down. This is the name of the fabric. Again, I bought this at the Sewing Center of Southern Utah in St. George, but we'll also try to find a link if you live er elsewhere. So if you live near St. George, you gotta make a little trip there. So let's take a look at one more that I bought there. This is panel fabric. There's three of these designs on there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make out of this, but look at this beautiful print, and it's in these fall colors again, so you could use it during the fall holiday season. Now, I love going to the Sewing and Quilting Center, but once in a while, they have somebody filling in a little bit, relieving somebody on a break, who's not real experienced at cutting fabric, and I wasn't standing there when they were cutting the fabric. Otherwise, I could have caught it before it happened, and I didn't notice it till I got home. 
that when I told her a yard, I wasn't thinking. I should have said one panel. Then I walked off looking at some other stuff and came back and it was already cut, but I didn't notice the, the mistake. So here's the start of another panel and then it got cut off here. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I guess I could cut it out and use a bird. Now it's totally my fault. I should have stood there. I should have looked at the fabric better, but I think she was also a little inexperienced. She should have recognized, because it says right there, this is where you cut it. So note to self, never leave the cutting table when they're cutting your fabric, because sometimes this type of thing will happen. My husband was wandering around the sewing center of Southern Utah and he saw this hanging on a door and he showed it to me and I was so excited. This holds all of my embroidery machine stabilizer because mine was in a tub. It would fall out rolling around on the floor. It was a mess. So when I saw this, I was so excited. Now it's really tall. This is a very tall door. And there's just these little hooks you hang over the top of your door so you don't need to hammer in your door or anything like that making holes. You just put that on there. And look, the only reason why I didn't put anything way up there is I can't reach it because this door is so tall. So he put in the shorter rolls, he put two in each one of these little sections, but it also holds the really wide rolls. I was really excited about this. I think it was around $20. It's really worth it to get fine things like this because especially if you're short on space, you can hang this in your closet and it won't get all disorganized or damaged from rolling around on the floor like mine was. I bought one more thing and that is serger needles. These are size 8012 and you use these for probably most of your uh, serger projects and really read through your user's manual because I made a, a foolish mistake while threading my serger. I have a very sophisticated serger. It holds eight spools of thread and it has kind of a complicated way of threading it. So I didn't read one section right, so I kind of got things all screwed up. But he cleared it up within a second and educated me a little bit more on my new serger machine. So make sure you read your user's manual. If you need help with your serger, go back to the store where you bought it and ask for some technical help on how to thread it properly for a variety of stitches. Many of your dealer stores do offer classes. So if you can get there, I would take a class because it's really worth your time. And after uh, listening to uh, Ken the Repairman, I think I need another class, but that's neither here nor there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you uh, Try looking at some of these products, especially the fabrics I showed you. Look at them, see if you think you can use them in something. Also, stock up on thread or embroidery floss, ribbon trims, whatever you think you're going to need for the holiday season. Probably zippers if you're going to make anything that's got a zipper in it. It's really important. And if you're not sure what you can make for Christmas, I have so many beginner sewing project videos, so why don't you check below your YouTube screen for links on how to do some beginner's sewing project that you can give out as gifts. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and happy sewing!
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.